So in our previous video, you saw that we finally purchased our new camper rig. Nervous wreck about driving. <laughs> Now we're finally back on the road, but unfortunately, a week later, we have to leave it. But before we explain, let's go back in time. We still haven't figured out the seating arrangement for Kramer. I think he's happy right there. I think we're gonna get him a nice bed right here. So that it won't slip. Right now, this is not working. Nothing like wearing a nice wool blanket in the middle of June. And for those of you asking, we don't have AC in the front cabin. Kramer is being dramatic. It's 75 degrees, but he's acting like he's in the Sahara. It's like a sun in here. It's fun. I think we're learning very quickly that we don't want to be in rush hour and rush hour in the summer. We finally made it to our stop for tonight. It's a beautiful setting at a blueberry farm. So the blueberry farm that we're staying at, 100% organic, just like an hour like north of Eugene, Oregon. But we're here June 27th to 28th and they don't start picking berries till the 28th. We have to leave pretty early in the morning, but I think we're gonna be able to stay and get some blueberry goodies before we leave. I hope. I love blueberries. I love picking blueberries every summer. I'm excited about this. It happens every time. They all become blueberries. Let's go to go hang out. I'm tired. That's a long drive today. <laughs> this place is beautiful. But when I stepped outside the camper, I looked down and there was foxtail. And if you're not familiar with what foxtail is, it's a weed that's mostly found in the western half of the U.S. So we don't really see it on the east coast. But it's dangerous to dogs because it has these little bristles and they go into their skin and commonly go into like their nose and their mouth. But they'll work their way in and they don't come back out. So the body doesn't dissolve them either. either so they can give a dog a serious infection or kill them. So you have to be really careful when you're out west. I, I haven't seen them that often, even though I know they're pretty pretty common. This is the first time I've ever like had a hairy Kramer who doesn't step on the fox cell. So if you're coming out west, do know that. Ah, Kramer, you put on a couple, man. If I'm wrong and this isn't fox tail, then I apologize. But I looked it up on Google to make sure I saw it. And I was like, I'm pretty sure that's it. Let me see if this is right. Yeah, that looks pretty right to me. Even the... I think that's it. I'm sorry, bud. Thought we were gonna get a let him play in the grass. Find a good dog park tomorrow, I promise, okay? Okay? He had a good day yesterday. So besides all the foxtail, this property is beautiful. There's a river going through it. We saw some people in a tube. It looked a lot of fun. I'm excited about the blueberries. That's really, I love harvest hosts. This may not be boondocking in the national forest or something more remote and all that kind of thing, but I love harvest hosts because some of the best produce we've had while on the road has come from harvest hosts. Sometimes we roll up and they have fresh produce. Sometimes it's even fresh meat. It's all kinds of things, but this one's a blueberry farm. I love blueberries. I'm tired. My eyes look tired. We had a long drive through Portland today. And tomorrow we get to go see our friends at AM Solar. Yay! You're not going to see that video for a while, but AM Solar, they've been around for both of our vans. And now they're going to be a part of our truck. We're going to go rest now. All right, we'll see you guys in the morning. For a long time, I've been just twice. For a long time, but never thought I'd see it with my own eyes. 
Blueberries are not gonna make it very far. Got them two seconds ago. I'm already doing it. Then. I love blueberries. They're the best in the summer. We got blueberry jam, two blueberry popsicles for later, and blueberries. May have gone a little overboard, but who doesn't love fresh blueberries in the summer? That's really close. I'm really close to this, aren't I? What's up, good dog? Let's go. Come on. It's it. Great farm. You guys are on Harvest Host, highly recommend Berkey's Blueberries. That's such a cute name. I think that's their last name, but it's so cute. It's, they've been here for like 18 years, cutest little blueberry farm, all organic, and then they let you sleep by the river, which was very peaceful. There's a road across, but I didn't hear it at all. It was so quiet all night. You woke up to the sound of the river. It slept great. We gotta go. You wait. Mmm, it smells so good. It's the desert, but man, the pine smells so good. Don't they smell sharp here? Not as sharp as Washington, but they're just camping out in this forest with the, like, I mean, they're not like giant ponderosa pines like you have in Washington. They're basic old pines like we have in Tennessee, but they make the prettiest, like, whooshing, whirling, windy sound when the wind starts going. It's just, oh, it's so pretty. But just pulled into our camping spot and there's the prettiest sunset happening just behind us. We're gonna go for a little walk before we go to bed. This is one of our favorite things about being back on the road is just pulling into these amazing, amazing places. Fun little fact. This spot backs up to some very expensive homes. <laughs> we get the same view for free for 14 days. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, when you come to a national forest like this, Typically, you can camp here for 14 days straight for free, and then you have to vacate. That's not a hard and fast rule. You can't just pull up to any national forest spot. There are places we don't allow it, but this one specifically is very camping friendly. And you get views like that. You can't see it, but behind these trees are mountains too, like snow-capped mountains. I just love it here. It's my favorite place.
Ah. Making sure everything looks good. I'm trying to look like I know what I'm looking at. I know a little bit now. I know more than I did. I'm trying to be really good and check the engine to make sure everything looks good. There's no leaks. That all the fluid levels are right. Oil's good. About every fill up or so. So we didn't do it when we were at the station the other day. So we're doing it now. Everything looks great. I wasn't expecting any problems, but you never know. Like you want to stay on top of it because it is an old car. I don't fully know what I'm looking for yet, but I know if something's leaking, something's wrong. <laughs> so we're going to start there and learn and expand our knowledge. But so far, so good. I mean, it's run perfectly so far. It's a tank. I mean, you can't kill these things is what people say. Let's go. Today, Overland Expo doesn't start, but all the campers can get there. So we can check in as early as eight o'clock. So we're gonna go over there, snag a spot at Overland Expo. All the classes and vendors and all that kind of thing will be tomorrow on Friday. But today's Thursday, we're gonna go grab a good spot because we know there are good spots. Grab the camp spot and then come back into town, which seems a little bit annoying to have to drive all the way back, but we have to do laundry, grocery shopping. Kramer needs a bath desperately. Gotta run a couple errands. Oh, car wash. We're gonna get the get the truck all cleaned up to show off the expo. that I'm filming and she's doing all the cleaning. It needed it. It's only been like two weeks since we got it, but man, is it dirty. Had a lot of fun in two weeks. All right, Overland Expo, here we go. Excited to be here. I am. Like, I never thought of myself as being a car person, but it's not really about the car to me. Like, yeah, it's fun to walk around and see how people adventure. But it's more about like getting from place A to B. And I, that's what overlanding is about to me. Got my SPF 70 on. Three different layers of sunscreen on the face. Got a hat. Okay, so if you don't know what Overland Expo is, it's a place where people who overland in all sorts of vehicles, sometimes it's just an SUV, like, you know, Toyotas, Jeeps, all kinds of things. And then sometimes it's weird rigs like ours or way bigger. But the idea is that everybody comes together and it's like this community. You can share ideas and experiences and just hang out. And there also is the other side, which is, I guess, the commercial side. So you can shop all these really cool brands and just check out what's new on the market. They also have classes, which is I think is the main reason we're here this year. We're here for the hanging out and for the classes. Uh, just a few different ones that they have this year are like Overlanding Africa, Overlanding South America. They have it by continents. We're gonna check those out. Let's go. It's hot. <laughs> Best booth at Overland Expo is Stunt Puppy because they were smart and they have a kiddie pool for dogs. Yeah, see, you do this better. I have well, to coax water, mine. You know. This is a water dog from the get-go. <laughs> right. She loves it. Right. Okay, come on. Get out of the way. Come on. Let's go. Feel better? I know, I know. Come on. You better come on. Let's go. Come on. Nope. No, you're happy. Too furry, please. Too furry, please. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's go. I know you want to stand. There we go. That's okay. No. All right, let's go. All right. We're uh, trying to set up the podcast for the first time on the road. It's a lot. I think it could be good though. Two mics. What is this thing called? The soundboard, the, soundboard. the roadcaster. Then we have our camera. camera. Kramer can join us this time. Yeah. We've got a good view. So once we get this set up and going, I think it'll be fun. But 
right now, this is our first time ever doing it and we don't know what we're doing. We're trying to figure it out. So it's a lot of guessing and moving around. So tomorrow we fly out of Portland to fly home to Chattanooga. And we thought before we have to leave the camper for about three weeks, we're gonna to have to leave it here in Bend, Oregon. Uh, before we leave, we want to do a podcast episode all about life back on the road. We're really thankful that we recorded so many podcasts early on because those are running out. We have like two more podcasts, I think that we are working through that we filmed or recorded a month or two ago, which is really nice. But we thought, let's go ahead and get a couple from the road because we have our gear. We had to go ahead and invest in it because we knew like we're going to be traveling. Let's go ahead and buy the gear, which is not cheap, just so you know. But we really are loving podcasting. So we went ahead and grabbed it. And we said, now that we have it, we're going to go ahead and do at least one episode of what it's like to be back on the road and just sort of talking about the experiences so far. And we may do another one too, if we can squeeze it in, um, of just answering some of y'all's questions. So that's why we are filming right now. We are in the woods. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's hot. It's really hot. It's like night. It's like 80 degrees 80, or 90 degrees. 90 degrees. It's like 90 degrees outside. Okay. Ready? Let's do this. And now that brings us to this Lowe's parking lot where we are emptying out our truck, putting it all in this rental car. And now we have to drive to Portland because we have a lot of things happening. All right, we're all packed up. Time to go to Portland. For behind the scenes and extra content, you can head on over to our Patreon community. Otherwise, be sure to follow on Instagram or like and subscribe here. It really helps creators like us.